Magavan and folks. Terribly sorry about my prolonged absence. I was in the process of moving, and now that things are settled, we have an integral to solve. So we're interested in the integral from 0 to 2 pi of e to the cosine theta d theta. And if you think that we're going to invoke some complex analysis here, then yeah, you're right, because that's our starting point. I'd like to begin using the definition of the cosine function from the complex realm. That is cosine theta equals e to the i theta plus e to the negative i theta over 2. And I'd actually like to expand this using e to the i theta, so the mathematician's classic trick of multiplying by 1. So in that case, we have 1 plus e to the 2i theta over 2e to the i theta. And this implies that the target integral i is just the integral from 0 to 2 pi of exp of 1 plus e to the 2i theta over 2e to the i theta d theta. And writing e to the i theta, etc. is quite a handful, and because I narrate throughout my videos, it's quite a mouthful to speak as well. So why not introduce a substitution, a u sub, or better yet, because we're in the complex realm, a z sub. So we're going to let e to the i theta, terribly sorry about that, equal z, which implies on differentiation that i times e to the i theta d theta equals dz. And this implies d theta equals 1 over i e to the i theta, which I recall we subbed in as z dz. So this implies that the target integral is now the integral from where to where, or over what exactly? Because we have e to the i theta equal to z, and theta here is bound between 2 pi and 0. So that means z here is traversing the unit circle. So we're integrating over the unit circle centered at the origin. What exactly were we integrating again? Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. So we have 1 plus e to the 2i theta would be, two, uh, would be z squared. And in the denominator, we have 2z. And of course, we have this 1 over z term, dz. And not to mention this factor of negative i outside, because 1 over i is in fact equal to negative i. I say this time and time again, I think this is really, really cool that the multiplicative inverse of i is equal to its additive inverse. Okay, but now what? Well, strange integrals call for strange methods. So I'm actually going to make use of the series expansion for e to the z. So we know that e to the z equals the sum over k from 0 to infinity. Rather, my notes for some reason use n, and I see why later. So we have the sum from the sum over n from 0 to infinity. Of what exactly? Oh yeah, z to the n over n factorial. Now our z here is being replaced by 1 plus z squared over 2z, which we can write out as 1 over 2z plus z over 2. So this implies that the function in our integrand, or one of the functions anyway, that is e to the 1 plus z squared over 2z, terribly sorry about that, OCD kicking in, equals the sum over n from 0 to infinity of 1 over n factorial, 1 over 2z plus z over 2 all raised to the n. And I know that doesn't really seem very encouraging, but we can invoke a binomial expansion here to make our lives just a bit easier. So we have the sum over n from 0 to infinity, 1 over n factorial, and the sum over k from 0 to n of n choose k, 1 over 2z to the, what exactly was the first term? I think it was n minus k, indeed. And then we have z over 2 all raised to the k, and now I need some simplification. So we have the sum over n from 0 to infinity, 1 over n factorial, sum over k from 0, terribly sorry about that, to infinity, and choose k. Uh, 1 to something is just 1. Then we have 1 over 2 to the... 
n minus k times 1 over z to the n minus k, z to the k over 2 to the k. Of course, I could write this as 2 to the k minus n. Terribly sorry about that once again. And I could write this as z to the k minus n. Okay, cool. It looks like we can do some simplification now. So we have the sum over n from 0 to infinity, 1 over n factorial, sum over k from 0 to n, and choose k. Uh, 2 to the k minus n minus k just means we're left with 2 to the negative n. And z to the k minus n minus k means we just have z to the 2k. No, it's, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. It's k minus n plus k, of course. It's 2k minus n. Almost messed up there really bad. So that is exp of 1 plus z squared over 2z. But the integrand contains a factor of 1 over k as well. So let me just move this around a little bit. And I now, I now plan to expand this by 1 over z so that we have 1 over z e to the 1 plus z squared over 2z. Terribly sorry about that. Where did k come from? And this thing equals the sum over n from 0 to infinity of 1 over n factorial, sum over k from 0 to n, n choose k, 2 to the negative n, which of course is independent of the index variable k, so we'll take it outside here. And we have z to the 2k minus n minus 1. That was cool, and we started off with one exponential function in z times 1 over z, and now we have this infinite series involving binomial coefficients, uh, some of them as well, and monomials in z. So we've gone from a, a relatively simple looking integrand to a much more complicated one, which judging by the history of all the integrals we've done so far is definitely progress. So recall that we're interested in the contour integral over the unit circle of this thing on the left hand side. And recall even more importantly, the fact that we're integrating a bounded function over a bounded inter interval, which means that the integral converges. And that also means that there is no issue with switching up the order of the integration and summation operators here. So all of this implies that the integral i is 1 over i times the sum over n from 0 to infinity, 1 over 2 to the 2n, no, oh, it's 2 to the n, n factorial, sum over k from 0 to, terribly sorry about that, 0 to n, n choose k, integral over the unit circle of z to the 2k minus 1 minus n dz. I said that wrong, but I've written it correctly, and that's all that matters. Okay, cool. And it's here where things actually get interesting. From introductory complex analysis, we know that the integral over the unit circle, or a circle of any non-zero radius r will work, of z to the m equals zero if m is not equal to negative one. And in case it is equal to negative one, we have two pi i. Okay, cool. That means we have only one surviving term for k in this infinite, in, in this series over here. And that is for the case of 2k minus n minus 1 equal to negative 1, which implies that k here is equal to n over 2. But wait, there's a catch. k needs to be an integer. And for that to happen, we need n being equal to 2m, where m is a non-negative integer. So the only surviving terms are even values of n, and of course, k equal to m, which implies that the target integral i is now 1 over i, terribly sorry about that, sum over n now from 0 to infinity, 1 over 2 to the 2m, 2m factorial, and then you have this 2m choose k factor times 2 pi i, and the i's cancel out quite nicely. 
And one of the twos cancelled out here as well, which means that we now have pi times the sum over, I'm switching the name of the dummy index back to n. So we have the sum over n from 0 to infinity, 1 over 2 to the 2n minus 1, 2m factorial, but wait a minute, we can expand this binomial coefficient here as 2m factorial over, oh wait, the surviving value of k was m. So that means we have m factorial here and we have 2m minus m factorial there. There's some cancellation here. And in the denominator, we see that we have m factorial squared. And I'm forgetting, I just switched the name of the dummy index. So I'm just going to change this back and then change it in this very next step of the calculation. We have the sum over n from 0 to infinity of 1 over 2 to the 2n minus 1 and we have n factorial squared, which is definitely an interesting looking result. It's not the most elegant version. It's not one of the more elegant versions of results that involve special numbers or maybe values of special functions like a digamma function. And I'm sure this might be related to some special function. Comment down below if it is, but even if it's not, the integral looked extremely cool. The solution development was awesome. It involved lots of complex analysis, and you can never go wrong with complex analysis. Wiser words have rarely been spoken. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Do drop me a follow on Instagram as well. Thank you. See you next time.